International, bringing you the best and brightest leaders of our generation. I'm here with Pastor Sergio Della Mora, pastor of Cornerstone Church here in San Diego, California. How you doing, man? Amazing. Now, this church is the third fastest growing church in the nation. Man, how are you guys keeping up with growth and even really preparing for more growth? One of the key things that we believe is a healthy plant keeps growing, yeah. but every healthy plant needs to be pruned. Mm. So one of the things that we have accepted as a church as we continue to grow right. is the need for change and wow. the need to let God prune us. Wow. So we believe that as long as we keep staying open to God yeah. and giving him permission to prune what he needs to prune, change what he needs to change, we just believe that the growth curve should continue. Now, growth is is exciting for you know people, and they often think of excitement. But you mentioned pruning. Pruning can hurt. Yeah. So, has there been some some painful stuff during this time? Or absolutely. In fact, we see pain not as a negative, but as a positive, Ooh. because we genuinely believe if you're going to help people out of their pain, then you have to have grown through your pain. Wow. So we allow people to go through their pain, but encourage them to grow through it. So when the church is being pruned and leaders are being processed, we don't give up on them. What we do is we transition with them. And we make sure that they remember that though the Lord's pruning you, it's only because He believes in you. Right. He believes in your further potential. And so we just think by taking on this philosophy, it's the John chapter 15 philosophy, mm -hmm that we really partner with God and God really becomes the Lord of the house and it gives him permission to do what he wants to do and it's very exciting. You guys obviously have a great momentum going. Um, you can feel it in your service, uh, what you guys have coming up with your book tour and all the, the, the different stuff really that's happening here. How have you have you built, sustained that momentum? And how would you suggest you know other pastors, even business leaders, do something like that? Well, I really I think it comes back to the premise of our book, The Heart Revolution. We genuinely believe if you will live, love, and lead from your heart, right. you will never lack motivation, passion, inspiration, or creativity. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 7, out of your heart will flow rivers, or out of your belly mm. will flow rivers of living water. Right. And really what he was saying is if you will live from the inside out, then there is this everlasting joy, this sense of creativity, and there's a resource and a well of enthusiasm. And what happens is when a leader stops leading, loving, and living from his heart, right. then they have to fake it. Then they have to manufacture the joy, the passion, the enthusiasm. Yeah. And then what happens is they're not really living the revolution. Right. What they're doing is they're making resolutions. Well, I, I'm going to make the decision to do this. But the reality is it's not revolutionizing their life. Now, you were a, a DJ, is that correct? That's right. What was your favorite record to spin back in the day? Atomic Dog by George Clinton. No way. <laughs> Come on, somebody. There, there it is, dude. So if you were, let's say, if we were to put uh, George Clinton in like, mm, ooh, who's like a, a, a current day, like maybe Jay-Z or yeah. something like that, into a, a ring for a funk fight, who do you think would come out the victor? George Clinton. Come on. Old school is always the best school. <laughs> Absolutely. There it is. There it is. Now, you guys have, have really done a great job of reaching into the community and the culture of San Diego and even really more specifically National City here. Yeah. How are you guys doing that? Well, it's our philosophy of ministry. One of the things that we are wholly committed to is the spirit of excellence. Mm. You know, when we came to National City, I came from Santa Barbara. 12 years ago to start the church plant. Wow. The last place that I thought I would end up is in National City. But yeah. God knew He had trained us to live and to see things at a certain level. So when we mm. came down here, we were able to actually see what life could be like right. because of where we came from. Right. So what we did is we established a spirit of excellence and said, we are going to build the finest facility Right. that will attract people from the north, south, east, and west of San Diego. So when I helped design the facility, the one of the first things I said to the architect is, we have to win an award. Yeah. Well, lo and behold, we won first place, Come on. interior design, a commercial facility out of all San Diego. Wow. That's right. Wow. And 
And the reason why is because our philosophy is when people come to this facility, they have to be introduced to the greatness of God, yeah. the, the creativity of God, creativity. and the excellence of yeah. God. And I think we really have been able to capture mm -hmm. what the original vision was. Right. And I think that's one of the reasons why when people come, you know, the facility speaks of where we're going. And it says to you, to a person, come and grow with us. Mm -hmm. But I think another thing that we've done is we made sure that we kept the mission of our church pure. The mission of our vision, the mission and vision of our church has never changed. Turning the hearts of youth and families to God and one another, developing our God-given potential in order to win in every area of our life and advancing the kingdom of God, first throughout our circles of influence, then to the nations right. abroad. Wow. People are taught to memorize that in our church. Wow. Because we believe our mission is clear and that our mission is meaningful, it, it's, it has a magnetic pool. Yeah. When people come to Cornerstone, they're asked to take steps where they're asked to, first of all, turn their heart to God. Yeah. And then they're asked to develop their God-given potential. And then they're asked to be advancers of God's kingdom. Right. We know that that is going to put a person on a journey. Mm -hmm. So at Cornerstone, you have new believers coming. 75% of our church is new believers that have got saved in our wow. church. For instance, just last weekend, we had 200 people come to the altar, make public confessions for Christ. Wow. But we also had 200 cell group leaders meeting with every single one of them to follow through with them, to assimilate them. So what happens at Cornerstone is, it's the culture of family. Right. So when you come in, it, you're ne you never feel like you're alone. Right. We tell you, here's step one. Yeah. You ready to take step yeah. two? Here's step two. Yeah. So it gives people a, a journey to take and they're able to take the steps as they feel led by God to do them. Within that, I'd say it's working because National City is actually seeing an incredible turnaround. Is that correct? And like crime rate and all that stuff? Or Oh yeah, you're in the hood. Yeah, oh yeah. This yeah. is the hood of San Diego, yeah, my friend. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things we laugh about, we feel like we've been called to do good in the hood. Yeah, there it is. So, but the reality is, is we've raised the standard of excellence, but also we made sure that as people left the church, mm -hmm. that they realized they were called to go into the community wow. and to serve the needs. Yeah. We have a green program right. and it's called turning brown spaces into green spaces. We obviously have an outreach to gangs, outreach to people that are suffering with addictions. We have an outreach to marriages, wow. outreach to homeless. We have outreach to people that need to get their GED. Yeah. We have a job placement program that wow. we are working in tandem with the labor department. So we are thoroughly involved in the community. Yeah. Super. thoroughly involved in the civic arena of our community as well because this is what we believe if people don't come to the church then the church has to go to the people right and we also believe and this is why we started a separate nonprofit organization called the turning the heart center is because if we want to help people we can't assume that everyone's going to walk through our doors to right. get help right. but if our vision really is to help people then let's create some new doors for them to walk through right. and the turning the heart center becomes a new set of doors people can walk through mm -hmm. to get help community help right. services so that they feel like they're getting helped and supported and a lot of those people you know, they see that our literature is there yeah. and they end up transitioning to Cornerstone. Oh, wow. Some of them don't, right. but the idea is the same mission. Yeah. We're turning the hearts yeah. of youth and families. Yeah. We're doing it spiritually here. We're doing it as a community agency over there. Right. But the mission is clear, turn hearts. Yeah.